So a lamina of constant density, rho x, y equals one, is bounded by the curves, y equals x squared, x equals zero, and y equals one. And we wanna find the amount of effort it takes to rotate that lamina about the x and y axes, okay? So first, let's get a picture of what it is we wanna do. So if I plot y equals x squared, it's just a parabola, like so. Okay, we also have the line y equals one. So y equals x squared, y equals one. And then x equals zero is just the y axis. So clearly my region is gonna be here. All right, so we put the x equals zero axis. And if I want, I could treat this as both a type one and a type two region. Uh, let's treat as a type one and see if we can spell out the region R. So I want to sweep an arrow from here to this corner. But how do I know where this corner is? Well, it has to be the place where x squared is equal to one, okay? So if x squared is equal to one, that says that these two graphs should meet at plus or minus one, all right? But at minus one, um, it's not the region that we're concerned with, so we'll just keep the plus one. And I can write my region R now. It's all x, y, such that I'll sweep my x from zero to one, and my y will go from a lower bounding function of x squared, so it'll ride along the x squared, so my lower bounding function, to an upper bounding function, y equals one. So my y lower, it's gonna be x squared, and my y upper is gonna be one. Okay. And now, we can write our double integral, okay? So, to find ix, we write this as the double integral over r, as uh, our integrand becomes the product of y squared times rho xy uh, dA. And we have everything we need, rho xy is one, all right, so we really just have the integral of y squared and then our dA will fall out once we put in our limits of integration. So this just becomes the integral from zero to one on x, so I'll put a dx here, and then x squared to one on y. So I'll put my dy on the inside, okay? And then y squared times one, it's just gonna be y squared. So now, if I, integrate the inner iterated integral, I'll get a third y cubed, so this becomes one third, I guess I can still write the integral from zero to one, and this becomes y cubed evaluated from y lower equals x squared to y upper equals one dx. All right, so now I'll have, I guess I'll put it here, one third, the integral from zero to one, and at the upper bound, I get one cubed, just one, minus, at the lower bound, I get x squared cubed, and when you raise a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. I get x to the sixth dx. All right. So it's pretty straightforward. They're polynomial functions. I'll get one third of x, minus one seventh x to the seventh. And I'll evaluate that from zero to one. So it's clear that this will, be, uh, uh, will vanish at the lower, at the lower bound uh, when I use the evaluation theorem and only survive at the upper bound. So I'll get one third of one minus the seventh. So seven sevenths minus one seventh is six sevenths times a third and then three goes into six two times, so I just get two sevenths. If we find the moment of inertia about y, I get the double integral over r of x squared rho xy dA. And again, I've already mapped out my region r, so I'm ready to fill this in right away. This becomes the integral from, and I'll use the same limits, zero to one on x, so I'll throw a dx on the outside, x squared to one on y, 
dy on the inside. And here I have x squared times 1, which is just going to give me x squared. Well, on my inner iterated integral, I'm integrating with respect to y. It just becomes x squared y. as y goes from x squared to 1. y lower equals x squared to y upper equals 1. And then we'll pass that to uh, the dx. So this just becomes x squared times 1 minus x squared. dx. Or the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus x to the fourth dx. And if we integrate that, we get a third x cubed minus one-fifth x to the 5 evaluated from 0 to 1. Again, survival at the upper limit and vanishes at the lower, so we get a third minus a fifth, which is so many fifteenths. 3 goes into 15, 5. 5 times 1 is 5 minus 5 goes in 15 three times, 3 times 1 is 3, I get 2 fifteenths. So I know we're not asked, but if I wanted to determine uh, whether it's more difficult or requires more effort to rotate this piece about the y-axis uh, than, say, about the x-axis, we would uh, use a skewer, um, let's find out how much more effort it would take. So let's just compare them by maybe taking the ratio of ix to iy. Okay, so when we compare numbers, we can compare them through division or subtraction. So let's see, I'll have 2 sevenths divided by 2 fifteenths. And if I invert and multiply, let's see, I get 2 sevenths times 15 halves, which gives me 15 sevenths. And another way to say this is that ix is equal to 15 over 7 times iy, okay? So it's a little bit more than two times more difficult to rotate it about the x-axis than it is about the y. And you could almost look at the picture and, and, and tell uh, just by sort of where uh, the geometry uh, has most of its weight. So if I were to rotate about the x, you could see maybe I'd have more effort because of all this weight being farther away from the axis, whereas about the Y, uh, maybe not as difficult. Thank you.